worth tells you how healthy your financial life is. I check my net worth on a quarterly basis, so it's time to see where I stand right now. Hi, I'm Shane of The Wealth Vibe, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. I think it's super important to track your net worth because it gives you a great idea of how well you're doing towards reaching your financial goals. One of my financial goals is to have a positive net worth. Recently, I had a few setbacks that impacted my net worth, but I'm back on my feet and I'm ready to see where I stand so that I can see where I'm going next. So I hope to encourage you to check your own net worth so you can see how well you're doing towards reaching your own financial goals. So in today's video, what I'm gonna do is show you my different accounts and we're gonna calculate what my net worth is and then provide a game plan for how I'm going to reach a positive net worth. And before we get into the video, I want you to give this video a big thumbs up if you are all for having a positive net worth. I'm gonna walk you through my different accounts and we're gonna start off with my assets. So the, the value of my Marcus by Goldman Sachs CD account is $503.98. So that means since I opened it, I've only gained about $4 in interest. Not too much, but I guess not too bad. Now we're gonna go onto my next account, which I consider my emergency fund, which I have with CIT Bank. So don't confuse that with Citibank, it's the CIT Bank, it's a high yield savings account bank, and so I have my emergency fund there. So since I lost my job in June, I have been using funds from my emergency fund. So I don't really have, I guess, the full amount that I originally started out with at my last net worth update. But we're gonna check in and see what the value is of my emergency fund currently today. So the value of my emergency fund is $1,589.90 as of today. The next account that we're gonna take a look at is my individual retirement account, which is my IRA. And so one thing to keep in mind with my IRA is that up until about June, I was putting $500 a month into my IRA because my goal was to max out my IRA and the current contribution limit for 2019 is $6,000. But when I lost my job, I decided that I wasn't gonna contribute anything else. But with my job, I was contributing to a 403B plan. And since I was no longer with the company, I decided to roll over the money from the 403B plan into my IRA, which I did probably like two or three months ago. And so now we're gonna take a look at what my IRA account stands at. So the balance of my IRA with Betterment is $5,102.09. So I've been using Betterment for about maybe a year now at this point. I really enjoy Betterment and especially with that whole rollover process, they made it super simple for me. So I highly recommend Betterment if you're looking for a really simple way to do your investment, investment, especially your IRA accounts. And so I have a link down in the description box. If you use my referral link, you'll be able to get a few months of managed services through them. So they're gonna help you with your account and by using my link, I also get, I believe, one month of free services as well. So I think that's really good if you have never, you know, started an IRA or have never invested before to ha take advantage of those services to get yourself started. Okay, so the next account is my Acorns account. And I have been saying for months that I want to transfer the money out of my Acorns into my IRA and I have yet to do it. And I really need to do it as soon as this video is over because I don't want to be caught again another three months from now still with this money in my Acorns account. But Acorns is basically a micro investing app. And I started with Acorns like, I don't know, like years ago and it was just a really good way for me to like invest and also save some money like passively so I continue to do it but one of the reasons why I'm thinking about changing it out is because I don't really use my debit card that is attached to the Acorns account that often so not only am I not really contributing a lot of money to it but also I think that the fees and whatnot are a little bit better 
with um, better men. So I'm thinking about just transferring it over there instead. But I think acorns is a good solution for anyone who is interested in another way of investing. And so if you're interested in checking it out, I also have a link down in the description box for you to take a look at acorns. But now we're gonna take a look at my account and see how much I have in that account. So with acorns, it says your invest account value is 4,000. <laughs> I wish it was 4,000. It's 400, 400. Why can I say this? 4,000, <laughs> 442 dollars and 14 cents. So that's the value of my Acorns account. All right, so now we're gonna go take a look at my Robinhood account. So Robinhood is a robot advisor as well. They allow you to invest and buy individual stocks. And so personally, I haven't really bought any stocks with my own money yet. I do plan to take a look at it and get more familiar with it. But the reason why I do have some stocks with Robinhood is because if you use my link below to start your own Robinhood account, you not only get one free stock, I also get one free stock. And so I've got, uh, I got in a few free stocks because people have used my referral links. So I don't have a lot of money invested into Robinhood personally, but it's money that I have. And so we're gonna take a look at what the balance is. So let's go over to Robinhood. And so as of right now, my Robinhood balance is $12.69. So like I said, not too much money, but it's better than zero, as I always say. Okay, so the next asset that I have is my car. So in May, I paid off my 2016 Honda Civic, which I originally leased. If you are interested in learning more about how I did a lease buyout with my car, you can check out the video linked here. But basically, I bought my car, and so now at this point, although some people look at cars as liabilities rather than assets, or maybe they just don't—they just don't look at it at all as an asset. And so the reason for that is because cars depreciate in value. But I have started to include my car as an asset because it is something that if I wanted to, I could sell it and get some money for it. So. We're going to go take a look at what my car would be worth based off of the Kelly Blue Book value and we're going to be looking at the private party trade-in amount. So let's see. According to Kelly Blue Book, the private party value of my car is $15,558, which is pretty good. In total, I have six different assets and across those six assets, my total asset value is $23,209. Next we're going to take a look at my liabilities. And basically liabilities are basically the money that you owe to other people. So I have two debts. I have student loan debt and then I have a debt for an iPhone. So if you watched my last network video, I should have paid off my phone. <laughs> I think I did at that point. My phone was completely paid off, but I lost my phone. I did not have insurance on my phone, so I had to purchase a new phone. And I decided to get the new iPhone 11. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but that's the reason why, if you're like scratching your head and wondering like, I thought she paid off her phone. That's the reason why I have another debt being my iPhone again. But first we're gonna start off by looking at my student loan debts. So I have student loans with Great Lakes and I did a recent video explaining everything with my student loan repayment and you can check out the video here if you want more details. But basically the gist is I have a zero payment because I'm on an income driven repayment plan but I will be accruing interest now that my loans have gone into repayment as of September 2019. So another thing that has happened since that time is that the interest that I accrued over the past 10 years that has now capitalized so that means the interest is now gone to the principal of my, my loans. And so you'll see here that my total debt is $55,038 and my interest is only about $300. And that's only because the interest on my loans has now capitalized and so all of that had been added to the balance. Now let's talk about the iPhone. So I bought the iPhone directly through T-Mobile which is my phone service provider 
And when I purchased the phone, I had to put down a down payment of, I think, $350. And I bought the iPhone 11 Pro with 256 gigabytes. I bought the 256 gig gigabytes, which is the second level up in storage because I take a lot of photos so that I can not only post to my thumbnails for YouTube, but also on my Instagram account. I'm getting really serious about posting a lot on Instagram. So if you aren't following me there, make sure that you do follow me at the well five. But I wanted to make sure I had enough storage for all of the, the photos that I do take. So the remaining balance that I owe on my phone is $718.75. So those are my only two debts. And with those two debts, I have a total debt amount of $55,756. When you subtract my liabilities from my assets, that gives me a negative $32,547 net worth. So let's take a look at where I was in the last quarter. My net worth has improved since last quarter and I'm super excited about that because I'm getting closer and closer to having a positive net worth. If you want to see what I am doing every single month to reach my goal of having a positive net worth, check out this video here so that you can see what I am spending my money on each and every single month. I hope that you liked this video and if you did, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so I can catch you in future videos. Thanks for watching.